So everyone who gets into the gym game wants large capped round boulder shoulders, but how do you get these? Most people will say heavy shoulder presses and lateral raises. Now I'm here to tell you that these are not the best exercises for round shoulders, both from an anatomical perspective as well as my own personal experience. Let's start off with the anatomy of the shoulder. There's three heads, your anterior, the front, your medial, the side, and your rear, the back. To get the round portion, you obviously need to train the middle. The front is used mostly in pressing and any movements where you raise your arm up in front of you. The side is used to abduct your arm to the side and the back is used to retract your scapula slash pull your shoulders back. When you do a shoulder press, which muscles do you primarily use? You use your anterior deltoid as well as your upper pecs and triceps. And depending on if you're seated or standing or using dumbbells or barbells, it can utilize some other stabilizer muscles to an extent. You also somewhat use your serratus muscles depending on how much you protract your scapula. However, I wouldn't recommend it if you're using weights on the heavier side. If you want to train your serratus, just do liberty raises or landmine presses if you want to target your serratus. Your medial delts can somewhat be used in shoulder pressing. I believe it's more so for seated dumbbell shoulder presses than anything, but even then I've only seen this on limited EMG research, which is electromagnetic. Point is, shoulder pressing is not a good way to build your medial delts, since that's simply not the function of the medial delt. So for the other movement mentioned, lateral raises, this movement actually does target your medial delt, unlike the previous one, since the movement is literally abducting your arm to the side, which is the function of your medial delt. There aren't many movements that perform this function, hence why the lateral raise is probably considered the best movement for your medial delts. However, that's not the case, and I'll tell you why shortly. Now, another Another movement people recommend is the upright row. It does work your medial delt somewhat as you're somewhat abducting your arm to the side as well as causing mad shoulder impingements. I don't recommend doing barbell upright rows simply because of the fact it can lead to shoulder impingement due to internal rotation of the shoulder which basically happens anytime you move your elbow sideways with your thumb pointing towards the ground above your shoulder height. Example, you don't cause internal rotation if you lift your arm straight up in front of you. When you do this your elbow is above your shoulder but since your arm is straight out in front of you and your thumb is facing the ceiling not the floor you won't have any internal rotation of the shoulder now this movement is okay to do in general everyday life as long as there's no prolonged resistance on the joint I make sure when I'm using the slicer at my supermarket job not to have my elbow above my shoulder for this exact reason as there is slight pressure when using the machine better to be safe than sorry you don't want to be that 35 year old who talks about how good he used to look simply because his body is too injured and worn down to work out anymore. Play the long game, always be leveling up. One remedy put forward is to use dumbbells instead of a barbell, since your wrists aren't fixated to a bar. Although you have a little more freedom of movement in your wrists, you are still performing the internal rotation of your shoulder since your thumbs are pointed down, as that's how you hold the dumbbells for this movement, and you need to raise your elbow above your shoulder to the side to get the full contraction in your medial delts. The reason upright rows are recommended by other people is because it's a compound movement. The one flaw with the dumbbell lateral raise is you're going to have trouble increasing the mechanical tension with this movement. Now mechanical tension, for those of you who don't know, is a fancy pants way of saying adding weight, adding resistance, anything that makes it seem like there's more gravity on each rep. It's widely considered the most important factor in growing muscle. Now there's also metabolic stress and muscle damage as researched by Brad Schoenfeld, but in recent years there's data to suggest we don't need muscle damage. As if we did, every runner would have massive tree trunk legs. Marathon runners are used as the prime case study for this argument, but I've seen some exercise science that also suggests we don't need muscle damage. And I believe in recent years, Schoenfeld himself said that it's not as important as we once thought. I personally don't target muscle damage in my workouts. I do get DOMS, which is delayed onset muscle soreness sometimes. And this is when your muscles feel sore after the gym the next day. Usually it's after legs. But no exercises in my routine are for this sole purpose. Most of the exercises in my routine are to induce mechanical 
mechanical tension, which is adding weight. So progressive overload, adding weight over time, and a select few of my exercises in my workout routine are for the purposes of metabolic stress, which is that burning sensation you get during a workout. When you do a 30 rep set, for example, reps 20 and above, you can feel the burn, but you don't really feel the burn on a five rep set of bench. Now, I use isolation movements to target my metabolic stress. These movements are where you only use a single joint as opposed to multiple. So this is like the whole isolation versus compound movements. In a bicep curl, you're flexing your arm, which only uses your elbow joint. When you're doing a bench press, you're using horizontal shoulder adduction slash abduction, as well as elbow flexion slash extension. So basically, any movement that involves one joint, I use higher reps and lower weight for my metabolic stress. Any movement that uses two joints or more, I go for mechanical tension, aka lower reps and higher weight. So with all this said, it seems we can only use metabolic stress to grow our shoulders, right? Since using mechanical tension via compound movements, aka the upright row, causes shoulder injuries down the track. Now I'll mention this now, there are some YouTube videos of people trying to argue that this movement can be safe. I believe if your hands are positioned next to each other instead of being far apart, and if you you don't raise your elbows above your shoulders this is considered safe however your wrists are still fixated on the bar and it's such an awkward movement if you lift this way you'd essentially be trying to lift upwards of 30 kilos plus eventually with your wrists stuck together and basically only lifting with your shoulders it's just not worth it you can get away with this movement I guess if you're using light weight but in that case if you're losing light weight then why not just do more sets of lateral raises or cable raises or crucifix raises you'd get more range of motion and it's still lightweight which can induce the metabolic stress required and furthermore those movements are just safer in general i don't know about you but i'm here for a long time not just a good time no upright rows because shoulder impingements thus mechanical tension is not optimized for our medial delts and now we're only left with lateral raises in which we only get metabolic stress we do get some muscle damage too but that's not important however there is one movement you can do that acts as a compound movement as it involves the elbow joint and your shoulder joint it's the rope upright row now i know what you're thinking i just spent the last while trashing upright rows and now i'm recommending them well a rope upright row is a different animal with a rope your wrists aren't fixated to a bar unlike like the case with a barbell upright row and your thumbs aren't pointed towards the floor as they are with a barbell row and a dumbbell upright row since you can hold the rope with a neutral grip now one counter argument to this is well just hold the dumbbells with a neutral grip then however this just turns it into a hybrid of a lateral raise and you'd be unable to progressively overload easily with this movement since you'd be using dumbbells as opposed to a barbell as well as the fact that since you're fighting against gravity as opposed to a cable the strength slash resistance curve isn't as optimal for your medial delts. So using a rope upright row, you get a compound movement that targets your medial delts. You won't get shoulder impingements as the resistance is out in front of you, which is the cables from the cable stack, as opposed to the resistance being above you, which is gravity from free weights. It's easier to progressively overload as adding a couple of kilos on the cable machine is easier than jumping 2.5 kilos on each side for the dumbbells in an isolation movement, as is the case with lateral raises. And lastly, your wrists aren't fixated to anything and lastly since your wrists aren't fixated to anything your medial delts can move properly outwards as they were designed to do in a way that mimics the movement pattern of a lateral raise only with the ability to lift more here's just some examples of my delts now obviously i'm no orlando magic dwight howard or derek from more plates more dates more dishes more bishes more trend more men nor am i a prime david laid or alex little but you'll notice one thing different about me than them the rest of my body is small, well compared to them at least, but I'm no fitness influencer, I'm more an academic than a gym rat, but that's besides the point. The reason I bring this up is, it's clear my delts are like, I guess overdeveloped compared to the rest of my arms. I've seen some other guys on Instagram do those little mini workout things where they like flex for 5 to 10 seconds at the start of the reel slash TikTok slash YouTube shorts slash spotlight, and they have a caption saying, want capped delts? Here's what you do and their delts are rather narrow and underdeveloped and then of course they proceed to do another generic shoulder workout that you've already seen before you know shoulder press maybe barbell shoulder press to dumbbell shoulder press and then to a lateral raise and then rear delt flies maybe they'll do a cable lateral raise if they're slightly different but like yeah they're in good shape but their delts are underdeveloped because they don't train them properly as i mentioned in the start of this video doing shoulder presses doesn't serve the function of your medial delt so i didn't mean to take a dig 
target them specifically. But to be honest, most people in the fitness industry don't know how to train optimally. It's just kind of easy to accidentally get things right. For example, your pec's function is to adduct your elbow across your body. So bench press, incline press, pec fly, cable fly, done. That's a pec workout right there rinse and repeat for several years. I bet a lot of people listening don't even know that that's actually the function of your pec, but they do those movements anyway. So see how you can accidentally just scroll through social media and accidentally get it right. Now, this doesn't work for your medial delt. So anyway, I hope using myself as an example, as well as using human anatomy, shows you that rope upright rows are the best movement for growing your medial delts. Now, one last thing I'll mention is, I talked about how dumbbell lateral raises mainly involve metabolic stress as opposed to mechanical tension. And I mentioned how mechanical tension is the most important factor and how you can't really achieve this in a few years anyway with lateral raises. So you can grow purely using metabolic stress, aka lower reps, high weight, and feel the burn, but it's simply not as optimal as incorporating mechanical tension alongside metabolic stress, which is why I advocate for upright rows, which is why I advocate for rope upright rows. Now, maybe David Laid and Derek from More Dishes, More Bishes never have done upright rows before, despite the fact that they have large capped shoulders, but obviously you'll have some genetic outliers. But even then, if you've seen D Laid and Derek talk about how they grew their delts, you'll know that they used a lot of mechanical tension tension and metabolic stress themselves. So I've heard David Laid recommend getting stronger on lateral raises to grow your delts. He mentioned this in some 20, 21 minute video on his channel and it was involving some Gymshark meetup in some European city a few years ago. And it was like raw footage of him talking to his fans. I don't know the video, but you'll have to check that out yourself if you want to see what he said there. It was like a 20-ish minute video and it was raw footage. It wasn't one of those day in the life things that he normally does. So yeah, in that video he mentioned to a fan that he noticed his delts started growing when he got stronger on lateral raises. Well, yes, this works, but getting stronger on rope upright rows is easier and quicker to do. Now, as for Derek, I've heard him mention how he was spamming lateral raises, like using drop sets and whatnot, and surfing the rack, which is where you do lateral raises with a heavier weight, and then you drop it down, and then you drop it down until you've completely finished with all the dumbbells in the rack, which is surfing the rack, which is drop sets, which is what I just said. Alongside spamming lateral raises, why not spam upright rows. Do three sets of upright rows and three sets of lateral raises instead of doing six sets of lateral raises. Make the workout more interesting. Also, Derek is obviously on gear and there's strong speculation that androgen receptors around your delts and traps cause those areas to grow quicker when using gear, but even then, that's not to say he doesn't know what he's doing or hasn't worked hard. It's just to say you can get bolder shoulders without upright rows. It's just to say that you can get bolder shoulders without rope upright rows, but the movement will likely make it easier for you to get them quicker, as you've seen in my physique. I wouldn't take bicep growth advice from someone with my body. I would, however, take broad shoulder advice for someone with my body. Anyway, try it out, incorporate it into your routine, and let me know how it goes for you. That is all.